National Science Week uh, 2022. Wow. Uh, what a nice theme, uh, celebrating basic research in the modern world. Um, we are quite uh, privileged and we have an honor to be asked once again to host uh, the 2022 uh, version. We will be entertaining you, the viewers, with our research. Uh, we'll specifically uh, focus this year on our grape uh, uh, breeding and evaluation. And so, yeah, we have got some exciting things. Uh, grapes are very important for South Africa. We want to continue producing good cultivars uh, that can compete uh, globally as they've always been doing for the last uh, number of years. Um, so yeah, welcome to the Institute in Bay. Since its inception in 1952 and first releases in 1965, the Agricultural Research Council's Table Grape Breeding Program released a number of cultivars. However, changes in the consumer preferences necessitate regular revision of aims. New seedless cultivars are developed by in vitro embryo rescue techniques, while crosses to develop seeded cultivars with unique characteristics are also made. The first seedless cultivar was released in 1986. The ARC has always been driven by industry needs with the aim of developing new and interesting varieties with lower input cost, needing as little as possible chemical and manual labor manipulations for bunch preparation. Did you know that just one new variety could take anything from 15 to 20 years to develop commercially? So let's look at the process. This is an image of grape bunches in full bloom. We decide beforehand which crosses we want to make, meaning that we know which pollen we must harvest to make crosses with. We harvest the flower after it starts to bloom. Then we sift it on a clean glass plate and thereafter collect the dry pollen, which is the male part. This is a grape bunch that is starting to bloom. The small yellow dots are the anthers containing the pollen. These anthers are removed with a tweezer a process we call emasculation. Everything happens in the vineyards. As you can see, the bunch is still attached to the vine. Once all the anthers are removed from the bunch, you close it with a paper bag to ensure that no other pollen is able to pollinate your emasculated bunch. After approximately three days, you will see that there are small droplets on the female parts that indicate that the bunch is ready to be pollinated to make new crosses. The dried out pollen is used to pollinate the emasculated bunch. When you want to breed a new variety, you need to make a cross. We make our crosses outside in the vineyards. We will go and collect the grapes. We will surface sterilize them, take them into our laboratory. We will remove the soft green seed from the berries and put them on a culture, a growth medium. You have to put in an incubator and that whole process we call embryo rescue. So from there we will get our little embryo to grow into a new little plant. But then we have the little plants in here, but we want to see the fruit. So we take them through a process where they will go now to the greenhouse. We will grow them nice and strong and then we will plant them outside. And Joy Wells came through this laboratory and through this process. Hi guys, I'm Ilza Harris, a research assistant working at the ARC under the supervision of Phyllis Berger and Krasna Herber. I'm going to show you how to take the embryos out of the microscope. First, remember, your surfaces must be sterilized. Then you're going to use your tweezers and scalpel to cut out the embryo. Carefully cut out the embryo and put it on the plant culture medium. Once that is finished, the embryos are going to be placed on a in a growth room to grow. Next, the hardening process where we plant from tissue culture. I'm going to show you how to plant the embryos that has grown into plantlets. In a mixture of hygromix, the plants are very fragile and very small, so carefully handle them. This is a broad, a broad spectrum of fungicide. We then close the plants with plastic bags. Then we take the plants to the glass houses where we take care of them until they can grow on their own. And making sure every day that they have enough water and they don't get any fungus. When the plants grow fruit, we will select which 
plants we can take further. The successful selections are then grown on one of our research farms or cooperative farms. The most promising hybrids or seedlings from phase one are identified to be grafted for further evaluation in phase two onto Ramsey rootstocks of foundation plant quality. Selections are made based on berry size, texture, color, taste and eating quality as well as bunch density. Standard viticultural practices like canopy management, crop control, GA3 application on bunch preparations are done on these selections. Vines are pruned with a cordon and spurs. Viticultural practices are adjusted for each selection as needed. Before harvest, random berries are picked to measure the sugar or bricks content with a digital handheld refractometer. Depending on the sugar to acid ratio, the overall taste and eating experience of the grapes are usually harvested at 18 bricks. Samples of each selection are packed and submitted to cold storage trials. Selections packed are submitted to cold storage trials for about five weeks. Organoleptic and visual evaluation or cosmetic evaluation for each selection is done. This includes appearance, color, skin and berry texture as well as eating quality, stem quality, etc. Scoring of cold storage defects are done afterwards and takes into account the values or percentage for berry and neck cracks, SO2 damage, decay and loose berries. Random berry samples for juice quality measurements and berry diameter measurements are also taken. All data collected during the season are used to adjust and optimize treatments and performance for each selection. This information is of paramount importance to make informed decisions with industry involvement regarding the future of each selection for possible release to the South African table grape industry. Going forward, it is very important that we take climate change and its impact into account and invest in developing drought disease and pest resistant varieties and rootstocks.